Hello there and welcome to our monthly program with the European Policy Centre for a special edition today because one day before the big European Plus presidential debate we'll focus on the European elections with my guest Fabian Zulek from the European Policy Centre, director of it, and his colleague Yves Pascuo, senior policy analyst. Hello and welcome to you both. Hello. So first of all, so four big names, so Jean-Claude Juncker for the Conservatives, Martin Schulz for the Social Socialists, Ska Keller for the Greens and Guy Verhofstadt for the Liberals, they are all running for the next European Commission's presidency and tomorrow for the big debate they will discuss, debate on big issues such as unemployment, energy, but today we will focus on austerity and immigration. So first of all, Mr. Zulek, um, so if the Conservatives, so as the last EU poll showed, the Conservatives are keeping the leader, so do you think that we will have another five years of keeping deficits and debts in check, especially on the southern countries? Well, I think um, the situation is a bit more complicated. Um, the problem is uh, that there will be a lot of extremists uh, in the parliament, a lot of anti-EU parties, and that means that no big party um, will be able to do things on their own. So even if the conservatives win, most likely they will have to work together with the socialists. Um, so they have to find some kind of compromise on contentious issues uh, such as austerity. Uh, on top of that, uh, the world has already changed. Uh, we don't have uh, such a strict focus on austerity anymore. Uh, the crisis countries are doing better, but they're also allowed uh, to be more flexible. So I would say uh, we are already in a different place. So a Europe uh, of austerity, I mean, if we continue to a Europe of austerity, they may have an impact on the mobile workers because there are some Europeans who want to find another job opportunities in another EU countries. But uh, they still, I mean, Romanian and or Bulgarian for our partners, they still uh, have difficulties to work to another country because they are not in the Schengen area. So do you think this is a solution? Do you think we have to enlarge the Schengen area? Well, we if... have to differentiate here about two things. They have the right to work in another country. The fact that they are not within the Schengen area means that they are still subject to border controls when, once they are entering the Schengen zone. Now, I think that the European Commission for a long time now has said that Romania and Bulgaria fulfill the criterions to enter the Schengen area. I think that the next president of the Commission will keep on that line. Those who do not want... Which one? Who Rom maybe, who maybe could, will keep uh, that one? Which candidate? I think but that all of the candidates are in favour of the entry of Romania and Bulgaria into the Schengen area. Those who are against are some member states. And these are the member states which have to be convinced that there is no major threat having Romania and Bulgaria in the Schengen area. So because they feel like a second class, I mean, Romanian and Bulgarian, they feel a bit uh, second, I mean, in I Europe. I think that to a certain extent they could feel that they are second-class citizens as they are fulfilling the criterion, the technical criterion, to, to come into the Schengen area. These are political reasons which are retaining them outside of this area. Mm. And if we have a look now on non-European immigration, the Greens, they, they propose to, to see asylum seekers being able to choose in which country they, they want to, to go. Do you think this is possible? This is a solution? This could be a solution, but the fact is that this is no, not possible for the time being because the Dublin regulation, which is the regulation which is determining the state which is responsible for examining an application, has been has entered into force early in 2014. So there are no any uh, possibility now for this regulation to be modified in the short run. Mm. So and more solidarity in Europe, uh, but also more European integration. That's uh, that's what Giver Hofstad, the Liberal, uh, want uh, to have to help. Uh, to get out of the crisis. Do you think um, this is a solution? And do you think that the Nordic countries, they may think that they have to pay for the others, like Germany still paying for Greece? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Um, the, the reality uh, is that we have um, a number of countries which are economically very weak, um, which can do uh, very little on their own. Um, if we want to help these countries, it does mean that the northern countries uh, will have to find more money uh, and that's politically contentious in these countries. Um, I think what we have to try to do is to change the debate somewhat. Um, what we really need to consider 
is um, that if there are investments flowing uh, from the northern countries to the southern countries, this helps all the, the citizens of Europe. It doesn't just help the crisis countries. So something which actually benefits everybody, um, I think, is a better way of selling it uh, than simply to talk about solidarity. And among the candidates, do you think uh, there, is, uh, there will be some tomorrow, some arguments between the candidates about this uh, solidarity? Um, I'm sure there will be some arguments. Um, I think uh, there will be different positions on what kind of things are helpful, whether uh, there should be transfers or not, uh, how you, you actually design that kind of help. I think all of them, um, to some extent, uh, believe uh, that further help is necessary. Um, but the clear issue here is not uh, between the candidates, it's the question of what the member states allow. Um, will the northern, northern uh, European countries uh, really be willing um, to consider further support mechanisms? Are they willing um, to build a better governance uh, which uh, equally applies to them as to the southern uh, Europeans? Uh, I think that's the big question. Yep. Um, and here um, the candidates can do very little unless they are being supported uh, in the national capitals. Yeah, because we see all the rise of national extremism I mean, rising, so the, it may seem that Europe is getting and getting close. I mean, they mm -hmm. close the door, the burdens, they close the door. So we tend to be less um, sol solidar than before, less open than before, do you think? Yeah. I think there, there clearly um, are uh, deep-seated uh, changes which have come with the crisis. Uh, there's uh, less trust, there's less cooperation uh, among Europeans. Um, and this is a real pity because it undermines um, the, the whole European project. And we're seeing on many issues um, that even the mainstream parties are becoming more anti-European. They're becoming more extremist. Um, they're using some of the same arguments um, as uh, some of the, the politicians at the fringes. So uh, we are seeing a deterioration overall. Um, it's not too late. We can still do something about it. Uh, but certainly there are some really worrying signs when even um, parties which are part of governing coalitions in countries like Germany are starting um, an, an EU le election campaign with very strong anti-EU uh, slogans. Mm. And so on immigration policy also, it's really important to have maybe a Europe a solidarity in Europe because to prevent another tragedy from Lampedusa, for example, and help the southern countries uh, with these this refugees. So that is that will be the solution to be to have more solidarity in Europe. I mean, well, with respect to migration policy, solidarity is one part of the solution, and it already exists. What is needed now, with respect with respect to uh, migration policies, is to be able to think migration policies in a transversal way. This is not only focusing on border management and irregular migration, but it is also to take into account border management, irregular migration, legal migration, and also what is the kind of international protection we are providing to refugees and asylum seekers. And on the top of that, it is, it is also time, we think, to think broadly, to consider that EU policies, some EU policies have also an impact on movement of people, development policies, agricultural policies, trade policies. And if we want to elaborate to establish a common as a, a migration policy, which takes into account the full picture, we really need to focus more on a broad picture rather than on, on always focusing on border management issues. Mm. Thank you, thank you to both of you. And thank you, uh, you, to follow us on UNED Plus. And see you, so next week you can, next week, next, tomorrow, you can follow the UNED Plus presidential debate in the European Parliament at 2.30 p.m., but also via our live web stream on our website. See you, bye.